When it comes to developing the arms, we all know about the biceps and triceps, but I'd say there's an underrated muscle hiding beneath the biceps. That is the brachialis, located at the lower upper arm region. A well-developed brachialis creates a distinct separation between the biceps and triceps, and in theory, growing the brachialis should push out the biceps, thereby enhancing the arm size. The brachialis is part of the elbow flexors, alongside the biceps and brachioradialis. Fascinatingly, though the biceps is the largest elbow flexor, the brachialis isn't far off. The brachioradialis makes up a smaller part. If the goal is to optimize arm hypertrophy, suffice to say the brachialis cannot be forgotten about. In this video, we're going to be uncovering some training tips related to developing the brachialis. Welcome to the house of hypertrophy. The brachialis is a pure elbow flexor, so it's certainly going to be activated in all types of curling exercises. But what sort of brachialis development might we experience from various curling exercises? This classic Canadian analysis found after subjects trained machine preacher curls with an underhand grip, the biceps increased in cross-sectional area by 8.3%, while the brachialis increased in cross-sectional area by an impressive 37.6%. So these findings may imply the brachialis experiences relatively greater hypertrophy than the biceps from underhand preacher curls. Interestingly, this was the only paper I could find measuring brachialis hypertrophy directly during my deep search, so we can't confidently say the brachialis grows more than the biceps from curling exercises in all circumstances. Fortunately though, other indirect research still delivers valuable insights. This analysis found after subjects trained dumbbell underhand preacher curls, the brachialis experienced a similar pump to the biceps. The pump is a temporary increase in muscle size due to fluid accumulation. As we've dissected in depth previously at the House of Hypertrophy, the pump does not appear to be a strong cause of muscle growth. However, with a given exercise, the muscle regions that experience the greatest pump might end up seeing the greatest hypertrophy. If so, somewhat contrary to the other paper, this data may suggest the brachialis sees a comparable stimulus to the biceps from underhand preacher curls. Finally, we have this recent Spanish paper that compared underhand dumbbell preacher curls to underhand incline curls. The researchers looked at elbow flexor growth across three regions. The measurements comprised both the biceps and brachialis, so no distinction between them was made. Nevertheless, growth across the three regions tended to be better with the preacher curls. In a prior video, I described how this data might indicate preacher curls to be a better biceps builder compared to incline curls. I believe this speculation still holds in the absence of other data. But as the measurement included the brachialis, I think this muscle may have contributed to some of the greater gains seen from the preacher curls. Notice how the difference in gains between preacher and incline curls was particularly notable at the 70% region. The authors noted that in this area, the thickness of the brachialis was around twice the thickness at the 50 percent region. Thus, though we can't be certain, perhaps a decent chunk of the growth experienced at the 70% region by the preacher curls is attributable to the brachialis. Some may be thinking, if true, why did preacher curls do a better job than incline curls? We'll address this very soon. But taking all these analyzed papers together, although it's not crystal clear as to what precise magnitude of stimulus the brachialis experiences from curling exercises, I would descriptively say the brachialis is going to grow at least well. These findings make sense. Throughout elbow flexion, the brachialis' leverage is not far off the biceps' leverage whatsoever. In case you're unaware, leverage refers to the muscle's moment arm, which is the perpendicular distance between the muscle's line of force and the center of the joint it moves. A longer moment arm means a muscle has greater leverage and ability to move the joint, and a few papers indicate that leverage is one important factor in how the central nervous system decides what muscles to activate in an exercise. Thus, this data tells us we should expect the brachialis, like the biceps, to be trained quite effectively with all curling exercises. We just saw this Spanish paper potentially indicating that brachialis may have grown more with preacher compared to incline curls. Moreover, recall the Canadian paper finding substantial brachialis hypertrophy used machine preacher curls, and the analysis finding a similar pump between the brachialis and biceps used dumbbell preacher curls. 
Preacher curls are most challenging near the start of the curl, where the biceps and brachialis are at a longer muscle length. Conversely, other curling exercises like incline curls and standard curls are more challenging when the biceps and brachialis are at a neutral to shorten the length. If you've been following the House of Hypertrophy for a while, you will know emerging research indicates challenging muscles at a more lengthened position produces more muscle growth. Preacher curls aren't the only way to challenge the muscles at longer lengths. Face away cable curls and other specialized machines can accomplish this. Based on what we've detailed, I would rank these curling exercises that challenge the muscles at longer lengths as more effective for growing the brachialis than curling exercises that don't. This is not to be mistaken for believing that standard curls, incline curls, or other curls that aren't most challenging at longer lengths are useless. Although the current scientific evidence consistently observes more hypertrophy for more lengthened training, training at neutral to shorten length still elicits measurable growth. So know that if you do not wish to perform curls most challenging at longer lengths, it's not the end of the world. There is one factor that may equalize the effects of all types of curling exercises for developing the brachialis. That factor is range of motion. So far, there have been three studies finding a partial range of motion at long muscle lengths produced overall more hypertrophy than a full range of motion. We have additional data demonstrating that when comparing partial range of motion at long muscle lengths to short muscle lengths, the former better builds muscle. For example, this Japanese paper compared partial preacher curls at the long to short length and elbow flexor growth across three regions was superior for the long lengths. This elbow flexor measurement comprised both the biceps and brachialis. Although we can't be certain, I think it's quite likely the brachialis was involved in that great hypertrophy. What all this information may imply is that regardless of the curling exercise you've selected, performing a partial range of motion at long lengths, since it will effectively challenge the brachialis at longer lengths, renders all types of curls as highly and similarly effective for brachialis hypertrophy. If you're feeling experimental, you may wish to try these out in your training. Another option is integrated partials, where you alternate between a full range of motion repetition and a partial rep at longer lengths. A final option is with exercises most challenging at the mid to shorten position, like standard and incline curls. You could perform reps to or very close to failure with a full range of motion, and then squeeze out extra partial reps at longer lengths. If you're not feeling experimental and wish to stick with a full range of motion, then you may wish to use the previous rankings as guidance. If you're curious about deeper guidance on the process of training, our high quality partner Alpha Progression can help you create track and evolve your hypertrophy and or strength training. With multiple valuable features, it serves all experience levels. Their incredibly flexible generator can tailor a program to your desires in less than three minutes. Specify the equipment you have, how often and long you want to train for, and if you want to focus or neglect certain muscles. There are over a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan is based, and the training philosophy is derived from meta-analyses and systematic reviews. Once the workout is generated, you can even deploy supersets or drop sets. Graphics unveil your long-term progress, from your strength progression, the consistency of workouts, and even the number of sets performed per muscle. There is a database with over 550 exercises. Scrolling through, you may discover exercise variations you never knew existed. The link in the comments and description gives you two weeks free of all the app's premium features. And if you like it and go beyond, you'll get 20% off a subscription. We'll never promote trash at the house of hypertrophy. I sincerely believe the app is nothing short of exceptional. The app's reviews echo this. The grip you use on curls likely has an effect on which elbow flexor muscle is slightly biased. We know the biceps has great leverage for elbow flexion, but its leverage for elbow flexion is greatest when using an underhand grip compared to using a neutral or overhand grip. Indeed, the best control data indicates the bicep sees higher activity with an underhand compared to an overhand grip. On the other hand, the brachialis's leverage for elbow flexion is unimpacted by grip, and since the bicep's activity is likely lower with a neutral and overhand grip, this likely increases the involvement of the brachialis. Indeed, the brachialis has been documented to be better activated with an overhand grip. 
Unfortunately, there isn't any research directly comparing brachialis activity between a neutral and overhand grip, so we don't know if any meaningful differences exist between them. Regardless, based on the info we've dissected, if the aim is to maximize brachialis development from curls, then a neutral or overhand grip should be used. It's important to emphasize this doesn't mean underhand grip curls are useless for the brachialis. Many of the studies evaluated in this video, such as the classic Canadian paper finding substantial brachialis hypertrophy, used an underhand grip. So if you're not overly concerned about maximizing and getting every ounce of lost muscle mass from the brachialis, I don't believe neutral or overhand grip curls are essential. Some may be wondering about the brachioradialis. We will dissect the scientific literature surrounding this muscle in a future video. Before summarizing things, it's interesting to know that although the brachialis is traditionally considered to be one head, some papers have found some individuals possess more than a single head. There are individuals out there with two, three, four, or even five or more brachialis heads. I don't anticipate any of this changes the recommendations presented in the video. The limited data available suggests in individuals with two heads, the deep head initiates elbow flexion, while the superficial head provides power once the elbow is flexed. So in other words, both heads are going to be involved in the overall process of elbow flexion. Nonetheless, here are the summary points. Feel free to check out our detailed video on what actually stimulates hypertrophy.